what do you think is the most repeated phrase in the Bible? The most repeated phrase in the Bible of both the Old Testament, New Testament, any book all together, the most repeated. Think about it for a second. You know, from a very young age, whenever I've been being taught to study the Bible and how to interpret it, we were always taught that if a word or phrase is repeated, it means that it's very important and that we should pay more attention to it. Um, and it's to add extra emphasis. So a little while ago, whenever I thought about this, I wondered which phrase in the Bible overall is repeated the most in some form or fashion. So after doing a little bit of research, the answer actually shocked me. So got your answer locked in? The most repeated phrase in the Bible is, do not be afraid. I found this phrase to be repeated somewhere around 200 to 300 times in the whole Bible in different forms such as, fear not, do not be afraid, don't fear, and so on. So since it's repeated so much in the Bible, it's obviously important, and so I'll be speaking on that tonight. Everyone, please turn your Bibles to Psalm 56, verse 11. Again, that's Psalm 56, verse 11. It says, In God I have put my trust, I will not be afraid. What can man do to me? If we put our trust in God, we have no reason to be afraid. In fact, God commands us not to fear men. If we put our trust in the Lord, who has the power over all things, then what can any man do to us? God has the power to save us from any danger that any man can put in our way. Think of the Israelites, who we just studied in our Sunday morning class, who, when cornered by the full might of the Egyptian army, were saved by God, who parted the Red Sea, allowing millions of Israelites to pass through on dry land. If God has the power to part oceans, make the sun stand still, and wipe out entire armies with just one angel, what man do we have to fear? Whatever persecution we may face in our lives, we need to always remember that we have nothing to fear if we're with God. Romans 8 verse 31 says, if God is with us, then who can be against us? I'll give an example from my life. As many of you know, I'm involved with musical theater at my high school. And a couple of weeks ago, whenever I was reading through our script for the next play, I realized that the character that I'll be playing is supposed to swear a couple times in the script. Obviously, this is against my morals and religion, and I just wasn't going to do that. And so I knew that I couldn't swear, but I was very afraid to ask the director because it's strictly not allowed to change the script. And I knew that if she wasn't in a good mood, or if I refused to say the word, even though they told me I could not change it, then I would likely be kicked out or have to give up my role to somebody else. And so I'll admit, I was very terrified. I was afraid to ask, and I put it off a lot longer than I should have. But I decided to just put my faith in God, and when I finally asked, the directors were relatively understanding of my religious beliefs, and they let me change it. So this is just one example of how if we put our faith in God and we trust in him, he'll always be with us. Another thing that we should not fear is not being taken care of. The Bible says not to worry about our necessities because God will take care of them if, he's, if we are faithful to him. Now turn to Matthew chapter 6, verses 31 through 33. Again, that's Matthew 6, 31 through 33. It says, Therefore, do not worry, saying, What shall we eat, or what shall we drink, or what shall we wear? For after all these things the Gentiles seek. For your heavenly Father knows that you need these things. But seek first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, and all these things shall be added to you. Again, things like food, shelter, money, and other basic needs God will take care of in our lives if we seek him first. Do not be afraid, but rather trust in the Lord. So, all in all, 
we should not be afraid of anything in our lives, right? And there's nothing to fear, and we should just go through our lives with no fear at all. No, no, that's not what the Bible says. There is something that we should fear. Turn to Luke 12, verses 4 through 5. Again, that's Luke 12, verses 4 and 5. It says, And I say to you, my friends, do not be afraid of those who kill the body, and after that have no more they can do. But I will show you whom you should fear. Fear him who, after he has killed, has the power to cast into hell. Yes, I say to you, fear him. Yes, we should not fear men but we should fear God. God is the only one who has the power to destroy our souls, which are eternal. It doesn't matter if men on earth mock you or praise you, hate you or love you, accept you or even kill you, because this life is just one second when compared to eternity. But we should fear and respect God and keep his commandments before it's too late. If you have not kept the Lord's commandment to be baptized this evening, why not? Why wait and worry every single night about what would happen if the Lord returned this moment? Follow the plan of salvation and be baptized right now. Or maybe you have become a Christian, but you've fallen back into sin. Maybe you struggle with worry or fear in your life, or have some sin of public nature that you wish to confess before the congregation. Whatever the case, if there's something bothering you this evening, do not be afraid to come forward tonight as we stand and sing.